And let's talk about the progression in this game. So to progress in this game, like in all MMORPGs, you need gear. Okay, so I saw this. This guy said, I said 300 plus hours playing Throne and Liberty in the end game. Here's my final thoughts about the game. Um, we're all obviously pretty excited, but for Throne and Liberty, as we said with Ashes of Creation, we're excited, right? This one actually looks like it's going to come out. The beta, I don't know. I'm not really sure why they're having like a beta because the, the game is supposed to be the same for the Western release as it is for the normal lease, but I assume they're just texting for bugs and stuff. It is what it is. But like, yeah, we're all super hyped up about it. And I'm sure that we will all at least try or you'll watch some gameplay of Throne of Liberty when it comes out. I played Throne of Liberty. The beta ended Monday. Okay, but even still. See, hours and hours and hours from the launch till this day. Thanks, and I tried Kima. everything what is possible in the game, which is how many hours? December 7th, more than 300 hours. And this is my review about the game. Everything that you need to know will be in this video that I will make as short as possible. So let's go. My name is PLK. It's 27 minutes, guys. Hey, thank you for your subscriptions. And this short community is growing so fast. Guys, love you. Subscribe, like the video, and let's go. So let's start with the character creation. Oh, character that, creation in this game as all good right, as in all other Korean MMORPGs with realistic graphics. Let's take Black Desert Online. It's something similar to Black... Everyone's always got to use BDO. Is the... Honestly, let's be honest. It's good that he's comparing it to BDO. It helps us relate, guys. Desert, you have many cool presets of the interesting looking dudes. Wow, okay, so, okay, guys, look at this. This looks really good. The character creation, look at the customization. You can, like, the, the, the pupil size and width, the eyes, spacing, depth, size, vertical width, like that. Yeah, this is crazy. This is, yeah, it's just like BDO. That's great. Different that's hairstyles, good. beautiful girls, and they're really beautiful there. That's why we like Korean MMORPGs, right? True. They don't they care know how about to make... the standards yep. of the beauty in the world. Koreans understand what we want. Chicks should be hot. The guys should be hot. Everybody is hot. So character creation is... <laughs> I was about to say, the chicks should be hot. The guys should be ugly. Berserker. Like... <laughs> There's nothing unusual, and it's pretty good. Next topic will be... Ugly Giga Chads, bro, like... Story. Story in this game is like in all MMORPGs, it's not the main thing. But still, we have a story, and 10 to 20 to 30 levels, you will be going through the main quest, and it will be kind of interesting. If, in short, you are chosen one, you have some kind of magic, you will encounter okay. different historical moments in the... The cutscenes look really good. Way better than BDO's cutscenes. Past, and you'll figure out why it's happening with this land and how to help it, and who is this main villain, and you know, always same stuff. But the thing is, as I said, like first 10 to 20 levels, you will be playing like a single player game with somebody running around and after. Some people are really turned off by the fact that you can turn into an animal. That's one of the primary draws for me. I don't know about the rest of you guys. I love playing a druid in DD. I think that being able to turn into an animal and move around. Like, especially, like, you don't need mounts then. You just, like, I think that's cool. Level 50, it will be completely MMORPG where you don't care about lore and story at all. Leveling and questing. What they change after... Video has cutscenes? Yeah, if you release the R key at any point, you end up watching one. All these beta tests and what experience did we have in Korean launch? The leveling is super easy and fast. You're basically making through the main quest to level 30. Graphics then you look do good. Some they pass the check. For, you know, weapon and accessories, the side quests and milestones. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Then you continue from level 35 to 40, then from 45 to 50. Some people get from level 1 to level 50 in 15 hours. I mean, they have damage numbers. That's automatically a, a, a really big thing. I love that. There's, they also have, like, the effects look really cool. Look how good the effects look. And I do want to point out that this is another one of those traditional MMO things. Like, That's look how good the Throne and Liberty effects are. Like, what are we even talking about? I will do. I will be the first 50s levels on Europe. Check my stream. Prove me wrong. Questing itself is pretty simple, but standard for all Korean MMORPGs. 
So you have a main quest, it's a cool interesting story with some cinematics and side stories and some lore. You have a side quest which is the blue quest. Combat looks they way better than Ashes. Territories. Yeah. And from some events like you need to talk with some NPC and the quest will be opened. Uh, let's call the main quest purple ones which is the signature for the main quest and let's call the side quest the blue ones. So you have different achievements. When you complete on one territory different blue quests you can get the achievement and achievement yeah, will liberty. get you some kind of resource of the game. It could be consumable items, it could be items for the craft, it could be items to upgrade your skills, to upgrade your armor, to upgrade your weapon, which is super cool. It could be gear itself, like accessories. So we call it a codex system, if I'm not wrong. And it looks like it's you don't need that because you need to level 50 as fast as possible, but then you will come back to all these codexes because to get some of the upgrades to your skills and weapon at some point of time, time in the end game is pretty hard so you will come back and you will do all the codexes to get all the small pieces that sounds like adventure logs that's what that sounds like to me it sounds like you need to rush level 50 and then do your adventure logs we're cleaning our room boys you know to help you the progress and also you have codexes like you go to the dungeon and you need to kill same boss like 10 times or you need to block some attacks or you need to be blown by some attacks of the boss and people doing that to get the codex because after the codex you get the some items for the progression and let's talk about the progression in this game so to progress in this game like in all mmorpgs you need gear which is armor, weapon, and accessories. You need skills, which is in this game is additional part and additional direction of the progression of the character. And you need upgrade all of this. How it happens? With gear, it's pretty simple. You need to drop gear from the monsters or to craft it. Some of the specific gear could be crafted from the specific items from the bosses. Like for instance, when you go to the dungeon, you can drop any of the gear from the boss and also you can drop the box. From this box, you will choose purple, which is epic, right? Yeah, you will choose epic weapon of your choice. So oh. the game helps you to get some of the items because the drop chest... Okay, so it's a little bit less RNG focused. That's good. My primary concern is that from what I understand, there's like one currency that you accumulate in the game. And then it's also the same currency that you get money with when you spend money. So like... If this was BDO, you would literally be grinding for pearls. Which is a problem when you get to the marketplace. And that's a little rough. Yes, like in all Asian MMORPGs, are super, super, super low. All right, so you dropped your weapon or you bought it from the auction. You have the item. It's a gold now currency? You need to upgrade the item. The same goes with armor and the same goes... You sell stuff to the marketplace to get that currency. Okay, so yeah goes with skills. Let's talk about skills a little bit. So you can use two weapons in the same time. Let's take I'm using staff and wand. So I have 10 active skills for each weapon and 8 passive skills. And I can use only 12 active skills from the both weapons and only 8 passive skills from the both weapons. So I choose them. And different skills have different type of the level. Some of the skills are green, which is uncommon. Some of the skills are blue, which is rare. And some of the skills are epic. You can't upgrade epic skills to the legendary yet, but you can upgrade. How do you get skills? Do you like kill bosses and stuff to get skills? I thought you just like leveled up and got your skills. Is this something you have to like do quests and stuff to unlock these skills? The way he's explaining skills is like the purple skills are epic. Well, do you like find those in the world or do you like level up and get those? That's kind of cool. That's interesting. Great, the uncommon and you rare get skill, skill books. That's cool. I think that's neat. To the epic skills. So to upgrade the uncommon, the green skill, to the rare skill, you need to upgrade it five times. And to upgrade it, each time you need one book for active upgrades for specific weapon. Then oh, two books. so you just upgrade your skills to purple grade. Books for active upgrade. Then three books. Then four books. And then five books. Oh, to upgrade that's... once. Okay, that's a lot less interesting. Yeah, I don't care about that. That's whatever. That's just more grind. That's fine. Skill, you need a lot of books. When you upgrade to the next level, uncommon to rare, you will have additional trait of the skill. And these traits are most crucial and most significant power-ups of your character. So, where all of the skills that you are using, 
as an active and passive, you want them happy. So you will grind a lot to get these books to upgrade the skills. And also you will grind a lot to get the upgrade for weapon and for the armor. So you also have uncommon, rare and epic armor and weapon and accessories. And you need different stones to upgrade these pieces. It's also, you can upgrade green to all right, yeah, so it just sounds like a super grind, and that's fine. How much time does it take to hit endgame? Do we know? To level 6, you can upgrade rare to level 9, and you can upgrade epic to level 9. For weapon and armor and accessories, it's growing of the static traits, which is all of the things of the stats that you have in the weapon. Let's take my stuff. My stuff adding additional critical attack when you're far from the target, and each level and also dexterity... And it took me two days on CBT. Okay, well, that's probably just the beta, though. Each level. Popium. I heard it took like two months for cannon. Level of upgrade of my stuff from plus zero to plus nine. These stats will be increased. So you want to increase the stats a lot. And also you can upgrade the traits in the weapon. So you can choose the traits of the item and you can choose from the list of the traits and you specifically will choose for your build different traits. Like for instance, you will choose in all of the possible weapon items, weapon and gear and accessories, you will choose the max health. So you will get plus 5k, 6k additional health, which is huge. Or you will choose critical hit or you will choose something else. I will not explain this in details right now. I already spent a lot of time on that. You can see all of my other videos and it all there. I will explain all there, but this is the progression of the character. Nobody cares if you level 50, everybody level 50. But the gear and skills, this is the progression. Is the level cap level 50? You're just sprinting to level 50 and then you're done? So how we can do this? And then Let's you're just working on gear? Get to the interesting stuff. You have dynamic mm. events. So by the skill... I don't know how I feel about that. That's you fine every day I, you have I guess that's okay. I don't, I don't really mind that. I don't, I'm indifferent, different I guess. Different dynamics event in different zones. An event could be PvP and PE randomly. Or by some schedule, I don't know. But you go to this event and you compete with others how many monsters you killed in this area and how many items did you get from them, collect and give it to the special NPC Whoever have a first place have good rewards. Whoever have a 100th or 150th place or without any rank, they will get less. What they will get? I think this is really cool. I think that this is something that BDO could do, but they just choose not to. I think that Destiny is an example of how this fails. Destiny has Destiny 2, if you've ever played it, has events called public events out in the world. And oftentimes they're just PvE events. That, like you, you just have to like do like a certain thing and then you talk to an npc or you get to get a chest or whatever right and you get some loot for it afterwards this um this looks like a way better version of public events like way way better like where you have just open world events happening and everyone's competing for resources and stuff i think that's pretty cool yet from these dynamic events you will get books and guild crystals. wars too so well, yeah if they have books, this and yeah you need i think this is skills. cool so you want i think it gets people players to interact with each other and it makes the world feel like really alive i think it's cool to go to every possible event and you want to grind and you want to compete right so it's like the huge event easily up like they did in destiny 2 like you can mess this up really badly guys but like i think based on how he's described it here it actually looks like it's it's pretty good it's a crowded with everybody everybody trying to get as much as possible and if it's pvp it's also the guilds are fighting for that and it gives you huge huge benefit if I have the purple skill, Final Fantasy 14 community is really hooked together because of it. Yeah, see, like, I think that these are cool. And you have a blue skills. It's like you level 30 and I'm a level I'm going to play this. It's this is going to be fun. So you want to go to the dynamic events. And these crystals, you can... I'm going to try doing it without any pay to win stuff. But yeah, I'm going to have fun. Use to craft the books and to craft the stones to upgrade your armor, weapon and accessories. So how can I get the resources for crafting? And how can I get the stones to upgrade my gear? So you have 60 possible contracts at one point of time. And you can complete all of them at once. You can take five of them and you do the repetitive quest like kill these mobs find these resources kill these mobs find these resources do this thing it's like that every day you do the same stuff for the contracts but for the contracts you can get the special boxes for two different resources so they're just quests that you pick up every day and you just go do them the normal resources like stone wood. I, I i'm curious how much the game actually revolves around you picking up these quests and doing them every day Am I gonna have to do this every day? Because that's that sounds like a chore. That sounds like chores. I don't like chores. 
wood, so on, and other type of resources. Special Lost crystals, Ark flashback. That's which what, yeah. need also like, to craft things, so you will do it a Sounds lot. like dailies, And yeah. also the stones for the upgrade of the gear specifically. This is basically the core gameplay loop from the PvE perspective. So you're doing main quest. Uh, all your dailies come from one person and you choose the ones you like. Yeah, but like, is that all you do? You just go pick up your dailies and then you go out in the world and if an event spawns, you do the event, but like you basically do your dailies and then you're done. Is that basically it? You're doing all the codexes and the side quests. I think quests, everybody quit Lost Ark because of the homework. You're yeah. dynamic events. That the, the schedule, bots or the pay to win. Can. You're doing contracts for all the resources and the stones for upgrade. Like for instance, I choose, okay, I need to upgrade my stuff now. So I will uh, grind Shen all the contracts and Liberty. I will choose specifically the contracts which will give me the stones to upgrade my weapon. And the last one is the dungeons. Again, I think that the... I, I'll be honest with you. The combat looks like it passes the vibe check. It looks like you're interacting with other players pretty frequently. You're encouraged to do so in both a PvP and a PvE fashion. It looks like... I've heard that it really encourages you to get involved with a guild and like get in a community, which I think is a really good thing. These are all good things. Things we're concerned about. Massive amounts of bots. Super pay to win. But we won't talk about those until later. Dungeons and the raid bosses. So let's talk about dungeons. We have how many? Five or six? 50 level dungeons. From what you can get specific weapons. That by cool. some really, really bad chance percentage. So you will grind these dungeons every day with a group of six people. All together with your boys and friends or with randoms. It's pretty simple. Everything. It's the black spirit icon they're gonna get sued you're fast in these games so you don't you don't need the cons party to go to the dungeons just everybody in the evening trying to spend their dimension tickets or whatever it's called the thing is like how many times you can get to the dungeon to try to drop something from the boss you can drop something from the boss itself and you also open the chest in the end which will give you the the crystals the upgrades the recipes or the box with weapon which it looks like you actually have to do the mechanic at least at this stage of gear, there's like, don't stand in the purple stuff. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's something, but it does kind of look like a loot pinata. I'm going to be honest. You can choose and you will grind the dungeons. The last one is raid bosses. So we have arc raid bosses, which are open world. Everybody go, the whole server goes there. Then we kill the bosses and it's like a one item will drop for everybody. Yeah, so that's what a loot pinata looks like, guys. Right there. It's just a giant. I saw it. Of thousands and thousands of people so mm. most likely it will be not for you but sometimes these bosses are pvp so guilds will try to kill everybody else and drop this for them or alliances so oh god bro bdo was like that too when it started field bosses well world bosses were pvp enabled and guilds would literally just block off world bosses so that other guilds couldn't get their their loot like, they would literally just, like, like corral the world boss. Like, no one could get in to hit the boss. No one could participate in the content. I don't know about that, man. Like, that's, that was a rough time to be alive, guys. You guys have no idea how tough that was. It was tough. Well, we have normal bosses. We yeah, have arc times, bosses, yeah. which drop super good items for the sets. You know, some unique stuff. And you also have a guild raid bosses. So you have a guild. Your level of the guild is growing. And with all new levels of the guild, you have new raid bosses in your oh my guild God. house and you can do it every once in a while so like five bosses a week but i also have a video about that check it on my channel everything that i'm describing right now you have on my channel this is the pv activities of the game now let's talk about a little bit of about the graph that world looks pretty good yeah it's unreal 4 but if you ever wait it's in unreal 4 it's not even in unreal 5 what are we even talking about? What? Oh, man. We'll jump to this, you know, flying whale and just look around what is happening in this world. The world is gorgeous. The game is super cool. Good looking graphics. You have really interesting effects from yeah. your spells. It's Korean style, so it's a little bit too flashy. It's, it's, if uh, you uh, compare to man. World of Warcraft or something like that. But yeah. it looks... It looks cool. good. The characters are good. The armors and weapons design pretty good. The it passes the vibe check on the graphics. The environment itself. It's and not monsters. old school It's just like pleasant to play this game. And you will grind in this game. Like in Black Desert Online, right? So the game should look pretty, pretty decent to grind a lot. 
and this game looks pretty decent. The graphics in this game, like I will say 8 from 10 or 8.5 from 10 for the MMORPGs. The graphics is pretty good. The game is totally open world, like totally open world. You have dungeons, which is instant dungeons where you go. Is this PvP? Is this large scale PvP? This looks like a with the group but you also have an open dungeons where everybody goes and grind mobs you know just an open world it's not instance all the <laughs> pvp act i don't know why maybe it's because i've been doing bdos pvp for so often but like or maybe it's just my graphic settings <laughs> it looked way easier to understand i just have everybody's other's effects turned off so i can just see players but I guess it it would get better over time. Activities. Most it of the things like in the game are fun. open world. If you want to go to the Lizard Island, you know, to grind some mobs for the good loot, you need to go by the flying whale. You need to wait, you know, by like schedule when the whale will fly, because otherwise you can't get to this island. It's open world, and you can feel this open world. And then you go to this island, somebody kill you, and you, you know, come back from the city. So the feeling of the open world in this game is good. You can see a lot of people all this and all the activities that you are doing will be around crowds and crowds of people so that's also good like nine from ten now let's talk about combat combat in the game pretty decent you have different classes basically you have seven different weapons you can combine two of them at the same time and also you can switch skills for instance even with my stuff and wand i have two three different skill presets for pve for pvp and for the dungeon healing it's not super you know different but you also have the mastery of okay yeah it doesn't look super crazy different but okay each weapon and which weapon is a primary you have a mastery for this weapon it's passive skills which can get a lot to you like uh resistance from silence and silence from edges are really bad bad thing from the daggers or additional mana regeneration or additional evasion so you choose the mastery you choose different skills and you also have two weapons and some of them you can combine like take not stuff but take sword and shield which is tank and one so you became the paladin <laughs> what is this it's this pvp bro this is this is a disaster <laughs> what is going on man hey i do want to point out these are dead all right these these are having a good time all right the virgins standing up here on the high ground they're having a great time all right the real men the frontline tanks yeah they're getting turboed man or take stuff and bow so you will be like annihilation machine glass cannon system is pretty interesting and you can't just switch it okay it's be I, KR today i don't yeah. want to be healer shaman i want to be and you can just switch it yeah, to switch to other weapon you need to grind all the skill books you need good skills okay so if you want to switch specs you have to grind the skill books for that spec okay so that so that your skills are just as good when you want to play in that spec but you can like choose to be a shaman one day and then a warrior the next day okay that's that's interesting that's I like right. so it will take more a grind. lot of time and also the gear which is focused on specific cool. game style that you have okay right? with that so it's pretty diverse and the combat itself i will i like that because i like to be able to do a diverse amount of things some days i want to be the support some days i want to be the tank some days i want to be the dps it is what it is say it's typical if you played lineage 2 it's the same but with more possibilities you can jump you can fly yeah by the way you can fly the really interesting mechanic because some of the objectives pvp objectives are high or really below of the other surface so all your guild can fly and drop in the center of the enemy and do cool stuff so with all these possibilities and that is really cool i think that is cool bro flying in with the bird with the boys you know what i mean and you just drop in and just start pounding ass yeah take the good mechanics of pvp and the combat itself from lion edge because you have different skills you can use them you can collect from your armor different types of resistance like you can collect the really huge silence resistance so you will be not silenced or you can make your evasion really high it will help right so you choose the play style and you focus on this play style and you play it and the classes itself yeah you have meta classes like daggers like bows and tanks they are super huge right I'm now okay with that. in the same time you need healers so in the huge sieges mages with the heals 
are also dominated. At least you can clearly see how many people are there. Because you can drop the meteor on the huge it can be bunch kinda hard of people in video. and they will be almost dead. But it's the huge damage from your side. So the combat feels interesting, really impactful. You yeah. can feel all the skills that you are doing and you grind a lot. So that's pretty good. Also combat, I really like the combat in this game. So let's talk about end game loop. It's a PvP. So what we have as a PvP. Okay. By the schedule, like okay, so this is exactly how BDO released. It's just all PvP endgame. Said we have different I wish there were PvE events. endgame. And though. most of them are PvE, but some of them are PvP. Small scale, middle scale PvP on the things. It is not like proper everybody gather around, we will go to the PvP. No, if you want to have fun, if you want to test things as a PvP group, if you want to try to get this event so you some of your guildmates will win you also will do this pvp and it's pretty fun and interesting just look at other of my videos and other videos of the throne of liberty it's pretty fun the pvp in this game is pretty fun so this is the small scale pvp but also we have the points of interest in this game and this is the boonstones and reef stones and the castles let's talk about boonstones and, throne and liberty. Stones. Boonstones are the things but that by the schedule will be possible to conquer by some of the guild how it happens you need to kill everybody in the round around the boonstone then your guild leader need to stay there some period of time so boonstone will be yours but in this okay so does your guild leader need to be there to take the bloodstone what if your guild leader is like afk can it be an officer 30 minutes of the pvp every guild can come and try to siege the boonstone, kill you, and you have div many different boonstones on the map. Sometimes it's all of them open at the same time, so it's mind games. Oh, that's cool. So these are all PvP points, is what you're telling me. These are all like PvP points, and you fight for these bloodstones. And they open up multiple at a time, so you can play mind games with the other guilds to try to, to, try to take them. That's cool. I like that. What it's which fun. guild will go where, what alliance will go where, and you have guilds like 64 people, uh, but alliance could be from four guilds, right? So it's about 200 plus people, and you have Zerg, many alliances all together, oh fighting with other alliances. So basically it's like 2,000 people versus 2,000 people, and you spread the guilds and, you know, the scouts, and it's like mind games, which boonstone in the... Very complex politics, but it sounds like the best politician wins. That's what that sounds like. I'll be honest with you. All the little people fighting on the ground, nobody cares. It sounds like who has more people and who has better politics. Just like video. And you will try to zerg. conquer. It's this just is a zerg fun. fest, this is man. The end game. And boonstones give How many to neck your beards you got some online traits right now? like additional critical attack, additional attributes, or additional gold, or additional something. Sometimes it's boons... Can't the biggest skills just zerg together? Yes, that's exactly what it implies. Stones near the raid bosses, so it's additional raid boss, which is additional additional item every day. Cool for the guild. And you have the raid bosses by the schedule, which also your guild can kill everybody. It's not even possible, but you know, your alliance can kill everybody and drop this item to the alliance members. And you have a siege. So at this moment, we have siege. Oh, this is so cool. Everybody flying in on birds and like landing. It's like, all right, boys, let's go get them. Yeah. Like, oh my God, you got like Sabaton playing in the background. Dun, 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 dun. I would love it. That shit sounds so Every good, Every two weeks, it's a huge, huge event. When all of the guilds, thousands of people at the same time, doing different mechanics with the- Okay, look at the giant golems, that's sick. Huge golems, which attack the castle with somebody on the walls who protect the castle. The people outside of the wall fighting and then they resurrect themselves in the castle. So it's like a huge event. It's really interesting. It's really oh, good. Oh, he just got like three people. For that. But if you will have it and you will have a guild, you will have a lot of fun playing the siege. And siege will give you a lot of money for the auction, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And for just normal money. After the successful siege and if you will get the castle, every time when you will get the castle, your guild will be more and more progress in the gear and accessories and skill books and everything yeah. and became more and more strong so you want to participate in this and you also get some resources and some money not only by the successfully siege the castle but also to siege some part of the castle so it's pretty complex and pretty interesting with all these golems and it's it looks epic it's just like it looks does epic. look cool huge amount of people Look at that, doing something
That looks sick. I think it's really cool. Didn't really look like it was lagging all that bad either, guys. Like, so as you understand, PvP is the end game of the game. And the developers promised us the battlegrounds, arenas already. We don't know the information about that, but it will be at some point of time in the game. So waiting for that. So it will be solo content for PvP for different classes. What I can say in from the good side and from the bad side, this game is only for the social play. If you are solo, you apparently also get the, the premium currency for winning. That's great. That means even if you lose, you just take out your MasterCard. That's fine. You just pay $60 when you lose Siege, and then you're on the same footing with them. You're fine. To be boring, not interesting, and you can't Nothing wrong do with anything. that, guys. You can kill some people during the PvP, but what's the point? If you're in the guild, it's interesting. You're going to dungeons, you're going to raid bosses, you fight, you have PvP, you discuss with the boys and girls so this is the social game if you are into the guilds or like myself the introvert which wants to be you know involved to the guild this is the game for you if you want to play so go and play world of Warcraft. come on so oh thank god he didn't say he didn't say bdo ha huh. guys we've 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 peaked this is the game for the social inter this is good i think that like like encouraging social interaction between players is at the heart of an mmo community and it's pvp game completely pvp game grind and then fun pvp now let's talk about controversial topic is it paid to win or not the thing is you have auction on the auction <laughs> i think we're past the is it pay to win you can buy everything by special auction money to get special auction money you need to sell the item that you drop in the world of on the raid boss and no not all of the item you could be sold but many of them could be right if you want to upgrade your skills and upgrade your gear you can buy the parts to craft these things right if you want you can buy all of the items and gear from the auction house but it's super 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 expensive because to upgrade the trade give me a figure give me a figure how much how expensive are we talking if i want an end game piece of gear of the gear like for instance i drop some super cool super expensive chest and it's the best chest in the game which is mother nature chest for the mages sure the cost of the chest was about twenty thousand of the lucent which is the internal auction house currency to okay. upgrade this chest to all the trades i need at least nine other chests like that or extraction from this chest which will cost a lot like thousands and thousands for each of them because one of them will Okay, so it's like five grand per piece of... Okay, that's that's a W. I mean, BDO's pay to win too. It's just extremely expensive if you want to try to pay to win. I'm okay with that. I'm, at, at, I'm actually more concerned than if the pay to win line... There's always a margin, guys. When you talk about pay to win, it's like, how much do you have to pay and how much winning do you actually get? Right? How much benefit do you actually get? And like... If you have to pay like an obscene amount and you only win a certain amount of money for doing that, okay, well then people are probably going to be okay with that. If it's a really steep curve, people are probably going to be okay with that. It's when the pay to win margin becomes, okay, you don't have to pay very much and you're going to win a shitload, right? That That's kind of a problem. The bigger problem here now is that the game, I think, is super susceptible to botting. Why would you pay to win when people could just, you just buy a botted account, right? Like most people. Are just gonna do that, right? Like what? Open the trade and others will upgrade the trade. And to get the good trades and trades doing a lot for the gear, you need all of these things. So to buy all of this at this moment, after two, three months from the launch, it's still super expensive. And some of the items, to get some of the items is like 200K of Lucent. Now, you can buy a Lucent by real money, but the prices is, if you want to get this item, which is 200K Lucent, you need to drop about 3,000. It does not look like Monster Hunter weapons. Let's just clear that up. It, it did not like this is nothing like Monster Hunter weapon and customization. Monster Hunter has way more weapons and customizations than this. And the weapons are way more like unique in my opinion. And it's only one item without oh, trades. You need to drop about $3,000. Okay, and three it's grand. only one item without trades, without anything. To gear up fully on the latest gear that you have in the game at the moment, you need to spend like $10,000, maybe $20,000 of dollars if you will just buy it from the shop. So, is it pay to win or not? I will say the following. You Only can drop three, yeah. everything. And most of the guys in my guild spent like less than 500 bucks on the game on the- $500 is a lot of money. 
for most gamers i mean how much do you how much is throne and liberty how much does it cost is it free to play or is it buy to play i think it's buy to play um like 500 dollars is a lot of money it's free to play okay but even still i mean i've spent thousands on bdo but i've been playing it for eight years to, to put like a new game 500 bucks first two months that's kind of steep man I'm like what are we talking about battle passes and maybe some of the lucent and they are like top and top on the server i completely free i didn't even spend for the battle passes on in korea and i'm like a little bit above average oh, and good. i feel There's myself in pvp and all the content super good for free so is it pay to win i mean it's the same like in world yes. of grass you have a black market if you want yes. gold you will buy gold but you can't buy some of the items from the raid bosses yeah you need to go there and you need to drop it but you can do it rates with the gold when you pay and they just go there I like a dollar per hour. That's what I like. I like getting it in a dollar per hour. In BDO, I like to say you can either spend 40 US dollars or you can grind for one hour. In the end game, your upgrades are probably going to cost you 2,000 hours of your time. Do the math. Right? Do you want to spend that much money? Right? Like, that's usually like the, the graphic. I'd love to hear a graphic like that for TNO. Uh, and take the item. If you want this, you can get it there, but not officially. Battle pass is worth it though. Um, the battle pass is almost always worth it, except in BDO. They kind of fuck up the battle pass all the time in BDO. Yeah, you can do it officially, but the price is so big, so it will be only like few people on the server can, could be whales. And uh, the thing is, these people will not change the end game of the game because end game is the mass and mass PvP. And even if you're the biggest tank in the world, you're staying, nobody can kill you. Eh, freak it. People will just slip you and run forward or if you're the best damage dealer which spent 20k on the game and you kill everybody with some ceo is laughing at 40 dollars an hour i mean that's true but the vast majority of people 95 percent to 99 percent of all human beings are like okay do i want to play this video game for an hour or do i want to pay 40 dollars they're just going to play the video game for an hour right again towards the end game the upgrades get really expensive because it's a lot of hours of your time with one shot yeah three people will come and kill you so it's like it's paid to win yes but it's useless in the game with mass pvp so i don't know i wouldn't say it's useless you definitely have an advantage over the other players and the other guilds it's definitely pay to win for sure i didn't feel that i'm uh best battle pass is the battle pass that gives you enough currency to get the next one naraka does that i'm literally sad that somebody is spending money on this game I can spend a little bit of money on the battle passes okay. just to make my life easier on some cosmetics and that's all. So honestly, I will not say that this game is pay to win. Judge me, I don't think that that's pay to win. You can literally spend US dollars and have in-game currency. What kind of cope are we on right now, man? What, what are we talking about? Of course it's pay to win. What? You can I've agreed with basically most of the videos so far. He's been very explanatory. But I'll be honest with you, dude. You can't just be like, well, the line is so far. Is it pay to win or not? Like, bro, like, can you pay for currency? All right, it's pay to win. Can you spend money and have an advantage over other players that didn't spend money? There it is. You get all the items that you want for free with a normal content from the dungeons yeah, the whole and market the is literally paid to win just it's a you joke. will be slower than others maybe because you will not buy all these cross materials but one more time to really get and to be the best of the best by the money you need to spend a lot of money so as i yeah. said the guilds in this game are pretty S important still. this is the main gameplay this the guilds actually i can say the guild actually is the end game of this game the intrigues and all different you know turnarounds and backstabbing each other because when the sieges began people understood aha this is the i cannot wait to cover the drama content of all of the backstabbing pol politics people whining like bitches it's gonna be like lakari with the original bdo arc you guys remember that yeah that's what we're basically gonna have to go through like this is gonna be crazy the prophet this is the reward for the castle so they will betray each other and the guilds it's gonna will, be crazy you know, it is. guilds it's alliances is changes during these two months is a lot this I, I the entire bdo pvp scene is 100 percent gonna play this game for sure because it gives a lot of like bdo release vibes and that's what they want and i guarantee and the bdo pvp scene hates each other 
they hate each other. They might not hate each other as much as they hate the Lost Ark players that are going to come play it. And that remains to be seen. But like, I, I don't know, man. It's fun. This is a fun part of the game. Let's talk, talk about the final thoughts. So we have a bad thing. So also bots, for sure. A lot of bots and you need to grind. That's the good thing. Yeah, see, that's a, he just glossed over that. It's got a lot of bots. The developers, during these two months, as developers changed this game so many times. Mages from the, you know, from the bottom hierarchy of the meta became somewhere in like above average and super good on the sieges and they're trying to change things they do, don't just like okay nerf this class and do this class better no they okay the balls and daggers will kill with creep but mages will do huge aoe attacks and they will have additional skills for aoe which from on the sieges are really good what about healers? Healers will heal. Yeah, let's make them heal better. And they try to change things listening to the community. So if Amazon Games will drop this game like Koreans do and will continue everything that Koreans do and will have the same version like global version for the Throne and Liberty. Why does this dude have a caterpillar wrapped around his head, man? Like for warmth. That's crazy. I... I don't think Amazon's going to have... Well, I guess Amazon is the publisher. I think Amazon will have a say in how they monetize the game, a lot like Kakao did. But, like, I think that the main office back in Korea is going to be based on, like, the updates and stuff. And I think that we're going to have the same problems that we had when Kakao was the publisher for BDO, where, like, you can't communicate with the Korean... Like, they're, they're only going to take advice from the Korean server. And, like, we're basically... Stranded. It, like they are, literally won't listen to us at all because we're American or European or whatever. I have really good thoughts. It will be really fun Why to is play he mouse with the clicking for on some his spells? Of Don't call a man out like that, man. What are you doing? Time, and it will be the main game for my channel for some period of time when they would drop it. So, final thoughts? I this dude just got killed by a princess ant. I think we have a good, not perfect, and uh, they have a lot of potential. Hey, he didn't cover, like, what's the death penalty if you die? show to for the game they can improve game a you lot like lose with crystals or anything or like exp you lose some exp that's not what you so that's why you're rushing level 50 like really hard content like for a solo it's not gear break is it it's just exp pp for small scale pvp different types of the activities during the day not just the schedule and the dungeons so the potential with the game is big it looks like developers will continue you lose to damage at 50 it's really visually it's super good visually uh, the game is super good. The immersion. I, I have not seen any companion squig. To the world and how it feels and how it looks. The... I'm sure that they might add that at a future date for like the, the wizards and stuff. Real but... fantasy world. It's pretty good. Combat system and can PvP. Literally turn pretty into... nice. Like... Play to win thing. This... Okay, can we just talk about for a moment that dude just turned into the bird from up? Hold it's up. pretty good. Combat system and... Bro, what the hell is this dude? PvP, pretty nice. Pay to win thing, decide to yourself. I think that it's a decent game. It's a decent game, and we should wait, and you should... That reminded me of that dinosaur from uh, Monster Hunter. If you like PvP, and if you like the, you know, mass PvP, this is the game for you. If you don't like it, if you want just the solo grind, some quests and items, and go to the dungeons with the boys, maybe it's not the best game, because it's about something else. Nevertheless, I, I think I'm gonna eat. In terms of content, I'm a shot caller, man. This is what I do. I think I'm gonna eat on this game. If Throne and Liberty goes really hard, I am going to eat. I was happy to see you guys. My name is PLK, and uh, I will continue to grind information about Throne and Liberty for you and drop it here in the channel, together with other information about other MMORPGs. Drop in the comments what do you think about this game? What do you want from me on next videos? And I will definitely drop a few cool videos about the game before the European. Right on. Well, um, I heard that we are looking at... Here's the video right here, guys. I heard we're looking at a... Um, like a full release for this somewhere around October. I think that's what Canon said on his channel. Um, somewhere around October-ish, we're looking for like the full Western release. And I'll absolutely be playing this game and covering it. Uh, and making content for it. So you guys can absolutely look forward uh, to that there. Throne and Bald Eagle. Very funny. Very, very funny. Okay.